All right. So first of all, we're going to be graphing and talking about um, tests for symmetry as well. So if we were asked to graph r equals 3, what are we going to do? Make a circle around 3. So 1, 2, 3 out unless we label them otherwise. And we just follow this lovely circular pattern. And that is r equals 3. So that's the easiest circle to make, correct? Especially with color paper. Okay? So next, we want to talk about our two other circles. We have a circle of the form r equals a cosine of theta and r equals a times the sine of theta. A is the diameter of each of these circles, right? So there's a spot for you to write the word diameter. And if A is positive on the cosine, it's symmetric to the polar axis. So here's our polar axis. If A is positive, it's symmetric to that polar axis. If A is negative, it's still symmetric to the polar axis, but it's then reflected across the pole, right? So it will be on the left of the pole, balanced across that polar axis, or it will be the polar axis. On r equals a sine theta, a is still the diameter, but this time when a is positive, it's symmetric to the line x or theta equals pi over 2. I'm sorry. So this negative is reflected below the pole. Okay? So negatives reflect to the left of the pole if you're cosine and below the pole if you're sine. So far so good? And it makes sense, right? Because x sine um, x or r, r sine theta is vertical, right? And our cosine theta is the horizontal stuff. Okay? So if I ask you to graph r equals 6 cosine theta, nobody wants to make that big table anymore, right? Okay? So what, we, what do we know about this particular equation? It's, it's six to the right. It's to the right. Okay? Six is the diameter. Okay. Exactly. Because it's shifted to the right, it's not as easy to graph as our good old r is 3, right? But we can still say, I know I'm going to have 6 be the diameter, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I want to balance it out and make it a circle to the right of the pole, right? Symmetric to the polar axis. You just kind of like... Try to, yep, try to do it your best your best circle possible. Okay? They are. Okay? Questions on this one? All right. What if I ask you to graph r equals negative 4 sine theta? So it's going to be down below the pole, right? And what's this radius or diameter? 4 is the diameter. One, two, three, four. Do our very best to make a beautiful circle that has a radius, a diameter of four, and is centered about this line theta equals pi over three pi over two. Okay, so far so good. All right, so those are the easy ones. Okay, next we get to talk about rose curves. Okay, so our rose curves are always of the form r equals a cosine of n theta or r equals a sine of n theta. So, a is the length of each petal. A is the length of each petal. And the number of petals determ is determined by n, right? When n was odd, how many petals did we have? N. n. But when n was even, how many petals did we have? 2n. It was always double. Okay, it should be equals. That was my pickle. Okay? So, we have 
have to figure out how many petals we have. And then the symmetry is the same as what it was with our circles. But we have to figure out what our starting point is, our starting petal is, and then how much to rotate. So the first petal of your cosine starts at the <coughs> polar axis, right? Okay. So the cosine and rose petals always start at the, uh, the polar axis, unless, of course, we have a negative number of petals and it's reflected, or no, an odd number of petals and it's reflected. And then we have to rotate the, the, the petals, find the next petals location, by dividing 2 pi by however many petals we have. Okay, so divide 2 pi by the number of petals from, from the first. Um, so the first petal of sine is always where? It would be pi over 2, right? But the 2 has to be taken times n. Okay, so pi over 2n. So when you want to know where your first petal for sine is, be at pi over 2n. Now, there is another way of doing this. You could substitute a in for r and solve for theta. Cosine is always going to be symmetric to the polar axis unless it's reflected because it's an odd and, and it's a negative. Okay? All right. So, here we go. So, so I'm sorry. Subsequent goes of space. Subsequent petals are space, um, 2 pi over the number of petals. Okay, if we have 5 petals, we have to divide it 2 pi evenly by 5, right? We have 6 petals, we take 2 pi and we divide it evenly by 6. Okay? Alright, so we're going to graph r equals negative 4 cosine 3 theta. So what do we know? It's going to start at pi. It's going to start at pi. Okay, it starts here. Okay, what else do we know? Four for its petal length, right? Okay. So there's only three petals. Yeah. And so our petal wing, oh, we said there were three petals. Okay, so we go one, two, three, four out. So this is as, as far out as it gets to go. Max R value is four. And did you notice that they were a little bit fatter when there were fewer petals, right? And a little bit thinner when there were more. So that's just something that you can do. And make, try to make it look nice and round, not pointy. I mean, I'm pointy. So there's our first petal. It does matter where the other two go. Okay. So we have to figure out where the other two are going to be. So we have how much space to occupy? Two pi. Two pi, right? And so we're going to take two pi and divide that by the number of petals. Okay, is how much we rotate the petals by. Okay, so 2 pi over 3. Well, pi over 3 is a 60 degree angle, right? Oh. So we're going to rotate by twice that, 120, right? So we're saying, okay, well, this would be 160 degree angle away, right? And then this would be 2. So we're going to be here. And then we still stay 4 out, not 5. And we'll have our lovely petal. And then where's our other one going to be? Down at 5 pi over 3. So 1, 2, 3, 4 out. So if they give you a number when you divide by 3, that isn't? Um, no, it, it, we'll try to give you some that are nice, right? We don't typically make a 7 petal one because 2 pi divided by 7 isn't the greatest. We might practice them for homework, 
but we probably won't make you do it on a test. Does that make sense? But you could always still say, I'm taking 360 divided by 7 and eyeball it because we're more comfortable in degrees than radians. Does that make sense? All right, questions on this one? Okay, next one. R equals 5 sine of 2 theta. Okay. Four, 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 four petals rotated 90 degrees pi over two, okay. And how long? Five Okay. And it's sine. Where's that first one gonna start? So it was what? Pi over 2n. So pi over 4 is going to be our first petal. So you only take the bottom. Right? Yep. Just the 2 and the bottom is taking times n. Because remember that pi over 2 was where our circle is going to be centered about, right, for the sign. So it makes sense that pi over 2n, that head, the number of petals, is going to influence where that gets moved. All right, so we're having our first petal at pi over 4, and it's stretched out finally. That's what I was thinking. So here's our first petal. Okay. And we need four petals. Each one is going to be pi over 2 away. So that is pi over 4, right? What's the, what's the rotating equation? Okay, the rotating, we did say we need to take the 2 pi, however many radians there are in a whole circle, right? 360 degrees, uh -huh. 2 pi radians, and we divide it by the number of petals. All right, I'm just going to write that down. Because we have to evenly divide it by all our petals. We want to space them all the same. Okay? How are you going to like, from the first petal every 45, like you did with the 60? Because if, if we did every 45, how many of them would we end up with? A lot. A lot more, right? How can I work with those? So with the 120, because we had, um, we took our three petals, right? And we took 360 divided by 3 to get 120. So we had to go every 120 for the next one. But like okay. we don't go every 45. So this one we're doing not every 45, but every 90. Two pi divided by 4. Okay. So every 90 we get a new petal. Okay. Other questions on this one? So then we have a couple of them that have been graphed for you. Nope, one more. And we'll have a couple that have been graphed for you. So what's going on with R equals 3 cosine 2 theta? Four petals. Four petals. Length. Three. And then it's going to start. Yeah, cosine, careful, cosine always starts at... Oh, sorry, never mind, four. Yep. Okay. So how far do we rotate? 90 again, pi over 2. So we're starting at our polar axis. We pull out to a length of three. Make our first petal. Then we rotate 90 degrees. Make our second petal. 90 more degrees. Third petal. And finally, 90 more degrees. Any questions on this one? Starting to get easier? 
Okay, so let's check and see if we can figure them out if we're given one. What's it going to be? Good. Why is it cosine? Because it starts at it starts at the polar axis. The first one is first number is going to be two, so it's two cosine. Two cosine five. A equals two because of the pedaling, right? And what variable equals five? N equals five because we have five pedals. So what does the equation say? equals five equals five. Do you remember this? Mm -hmm. Does it? If it like doesn't tell you, like you were to think that was like six, right? Mm -hmm. If it doesn't write it, mean it's very hard to see as on your on your graph. I fix it for next year. And I can actually redesign it completely for next year. <laughs> so I don't like the one page I'm going to probably do front and back. <laughs> All right, next one. Sounds like Sam or Samuel. Yeah. All right, next one. Let's see if we can figure out what this one is. Now that I've written all over it. This okay, we know it's sine one. Because it's because of the charging axis out of the polar axis. Yeah, it'd be six. And then they can go over the other. Go over the four. Quick. So. Four sine minus six. Okay. Let's make sure that our rotation thing makes sense, right? Our first pedal starting where? Pi over 2 times 6, pi over 12, right? That seemed like it would be halfway between 0 and pi over 6, okay? And then every row, every one of them is rotated. We have to just rotate 2 pi over, how many pedals do we have? 12, so 2 pi over 12 is the same thing as pi over so every pi over six is a new pedal. Make sense? Questions on this one? Okay. So next one. Last one for this uh, rose curve section. Pi over six. It's gonna start pi over six. Why? <laughs> Our part. Two pi over three. Okay. So we start out with a pedal length of four at pi over six. And our next one's going to be one fifty. Questions on that one? All right, your circle experts. Ready for Lima songs? Do we have a choice, right? <laughs> All right. So let's hear. How Limasson sounds when a, a French speaker, hopefully, or someone who pronounces it better than I do. Limasson. 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 That's what I was wondering. Yeah. Limasson. Okay. <laughs> and this is how Papillon sounds. Papillon. 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 That's a lot more formal when you say it like that. Limousin. <laughs> I'm moving to Papillon. 
<laughs> All right. So here we go. So lemma terms are of the form R equals A plus or minus B plus sine theta, or R equals A plus or minus B sine theta. Okay? If we have a ratio in which the absolute value of A, strip the signs off, absolute value of A over the absolute value of B is smaller than 1, it ha ends up with an inner loop. Okay? If we have an absolute value of A over the absolute value of B, and we strip the signs off, and A over B is equal to 1, then we get a card ring. And if that A over B is between 1 and 2, then we have a simple Lemus Holmes. And if A over B is bigger than or equal to 2, it becomes convex. Okay? So, always think about sine versus cosine, which axis is going to be symmetric to, right? And then we should um, also realize that A plus B will be the length of that main axis that the majority of it is symmetric to. So A plus B is your main axis length. And of course, these are absolute value things, right? So we strip the signs off. A is going to be the length of your opposite axis, not the main one, the other one. And A minus B is your lower point. Again, with all the, all the signs you need. So if you want to remind yourself this. We're only talking absolute values here. Alex, put it away. I think there's too much to focus on right now. Okay? All right, so here we go. So we're going to make this little table so we get the hang of this. And then like our rose curves, you're going to just be able to look at it and know immediately. So, what is A? 1. What is B? 2. Okay, thank you for stripping the signs off. We don't care about the signs right now. Okay? What's A plus B? 3. And what's A again? And what's A minus B? Alright, so A plus B was the Main axis, right? This was our opposite axis. And this was our lower point. So you never have a negative number, so even though one of us is negative one, it's still being positive one? Correct. Okay. okay. We're stripping all, only dealing with absolute values of A and B, so we don't worry about any of the signs. Okay? Now, cosine. Or is it symmetric to? Yeah. Polar axis, but because the 2 is negative, it's going to be reflected. Okay, so our main axis is here. <coughs> and this will be our opposite axis. Okay, so when we take A and add B to it, we get 3, right? So our length of our main axis is 3. How do you know the guys Because if it's horizontal, if you want to call it that way, right? Or the polar oh, axis is our only, yeah, think, still think of them as like the x and y axis, a horizontal axis and a vertical axis. Okay? So 3 out on the main axis. How far on the opposing axis? 1. one. That means you go one up and one down. The lower point is one, right? <laughs> okay. So because so first of all, let's ask, we should have asked ourselves, what kind is this? Inner loop. Okay. So if it's an inner loop, that means that we're pulling in one. That's where our loop to loop is going. Okay. So now we're ready to draw it. It's going to look like this. As this loop to loop comes back. Hopefully these are more balanced. So 
the lower point is always on the top If it is a, yeah, well, it, yeah, it's all actually on your main axis, right? But it's always going to be dependent upon whether it's an inner loop or a cardioid. Yep. Okay. The lower point is on the main axis. And you'll always do two points at the so wherever you're up at, one, one below, yeah, one above, one below. So a total distance of twice that. Okay, two a minus b will be your total length of your of your opposite axis. Okay, the reason we knew it was left side was because this a was negative, or sorry, b was negative. <coughs> the number multiplied by cosine. Other questions about this one? All right, next. Three plus two sine theta. Minus three is two. So what kind of uh, unison are we going to have? plus b is 5. A again was 3. And a minus b is 1. So our main axis has a length of 5, right? Our opposite axis has a length of 3. And our lower point on the main axis is 1. It's sine. So what does that mean? It's going to be a metric to pi over 2, right? And it's going to be above the pole, okay? So our main axis is 5. About 5. Opposite axis. 3, right? So 3 left, 3 right of the pole. And lower point is 1 when it's dimpled. Yeah, it's only going 1 out. When it's an inner loop, it has to go 1 inside. If it's dimpled, it goes 1 outside. Okay. So when we graph it, it's going to kind of come in and do a little, a little... There. Not a true cardioid because it didn't get to go here, right? Need it more rounded. sense? Question on this one. Okay. All right, next one. 2 plus 2 cosine. A is 2, B is 2. When A is 2 and B is 2, what kind of famous one do we get? Plus C. We write A down again to remember that our minor axis or our opposing opposite axis is 2. And then A minus B is 0. Right, that's how we know that it's going to come back and touch the pole. Okay? So, cosine. Polar axis. And it's positive, so it's not reflected, right? And so we're going to go four out. Any up and down? Two up, two down. And then it's going to be a zero. And so it's going to do something like this. And try not to make it look like a true heart because it won't have a true point there. So what's the difference between a dimple and a cardioid? Okay, so dimple. Heads for the pole, but doesn't get to reach it. 
Okay. Whereas the the carbioid actually gets to touch the pole. Always. Yep. Other questions? Wait, is the pole the center dot or like yep. this is your pole. What was the origin on our XY coordinate plane? All right. How about this one? Plus B is we write A down again, so we know our length of our polar or how much to go up and down our opposing axis. And A minus C. Which way are we going? Up and down, so up four. One, two, three, four. Left and right three. Our yellow point is two. And then we just try to draw it as best as we can. It's going to be kind of flat. It's not dimpling in, right? So we don't want to, it could potentially bulge out a little bit, but we basically are making a shield here. And it sure beats having to plot all sorts of points, right? So that the two-point rail is going the main superior line? So the, because this is a con convex, then it's going, the lower point is going to be outside <laughs> of the main axis, right? So it's going to be on the other side of the pole. But either way, with like, you know, with cardio and thing, the long X is always on the main axis. On the main axis, yep. Either with on the on the same side or the opposite side of the pole. Other questions on this one? So you do these, right? We've done one of each of these. All right. So here's the last one. Easy ones for last, I guess. Lemniscus. Bend down so you can hear it. You need to get out of the way. Lemniscuit. Kind of reminds you of biscuit, right? Lemniscuit. Okay. So we call these biscuit wraps. I think of them as propellers on a plane. And infinity. And infinity, right? But then we have the one that's catacorn. Okay. So, when this gets r of the form r squared equals a squared cosine 2 theta, <coughs> these moves. Thank you. or r squared equals a squared sine 2 theta. Okay? So, when it is a squared cosine 2 theta, it will always be symmetric to, the first part is symmetric to the polar axis, right? Now, there are some tests for symmetry that we'll look at in just a second. But the polar axis is also symmetric to the pole, and it's also symmetric to the line theta equals pi over 2 of the, you know, a vertical line through there. However, the sine is only symmetric to the pole, because we never talk about it being symmetric to a line theta equals pi over 4. Okay, so I was interested in vertical, horizontal, and origin, right, from our days back in page 44 or 68 or whatever of our book when we did our tests for for um, symmetry in chapter one. <laughs> sure we did. Sure we did. <laughs> we remember that well. All right, so here we go. We're going to graph r squared equals 16 sine 2 theta. So do you want to call them propellers or? <laughs> um, yeah. The length of each loop is? Let me just so it's, a it's, a square root of a squared, right? so it's just going to be plain old a. Okay? Okay? And so this is going to be, have a length of 4. Okay? 
Now, what's it centered about? The pole. The pole is, is symmetric about the pole only, right? And so where are we going? Four out? Anywhere. Oh. Anywhere. It has to be on the polar axis. <coughs> okay. What does sign do? Oh, this one is the same? I'm sorry. My fault. You're right. It was the pole. No, I had last time. I had it out of order. Oh, yes. No, there's not. There's Let me check. We're the opposite of like all of you. Yes. Well, this is the right artist the opposite way. I can fix mine. Okay. Easier to fix this that way. Okay, so it should say 16. Oh, it's okay. So this first one should be 16 cos. That's one should be sine. Okay. Sine cosine. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. All right, now mine matches your paper. Okay, so that's why I was confused. We're going to be symmetric about the polar axis, right? So one, two, three, four. One propeller. Two propellers. Never make my propellers quite wide enough. So it should look kind of like an infinity sign, shouldn't it? Mine aren't balanced. Do a better job. <laughs> do a better job. <laughs> Don't do as I do. Do as, as you should. <laughs> All right. What's going to happen with nine sine two theta? Okay, it makes it a limnistic. It's just what makes it a limnistic. I like these. All of these, yep. Okay. I like these. If it's not two, there's something wrong. There's something wrong, yep. I mistyped it or something. Okay, and if it's not an R squared, there's something wrong. She's back to books. Yep. Okay, so what's going to happen with 9 sine 2 theta? Length of 3. Length of 3. Yep, going to do this. So how is it only symmetric to the pole below is Because it's um, symmetric to the pole, we never really talk about symmetric to a line of theta equals pi over 4, right? It's just this pole. That's the only options we have. We have pole, we have x-axis and y-axis, right? So in this in this environment, we have the, the polar axis, the pole, and the line theta equals pi over 2. It still mimics what we see in the, in the, real, in the rectangular coordinate system. So do you just remember this right there? Yeah. Yep. Now, what's going to happen with this one? It's going to be um, one of the up and down. Okay, will it make it up and down? I don't know. Or the Wait, how is it a negative 16? Okay, because if r squared, squared equals a negative 16, we're going to take the square root and we're going to say, oh, wait a minute, there's going to be a problem with it, right? Mm -hmm. What it actually ends up doing is it ends up reflecting it across the, I was gonna say. the pole, right? So, so it looks the same. Okay. Yeah, do as you should, not as I do. <laughs> Make it look right. Do what I say, not as I do. <laughs> exactly. Make them your images. I can't do it on this big page. I just do look your Yeah, I do the infinity sign works. Okay, but here's what's weird. Okay, does that one go? They're gonna split. Okay. This one does. You were right. Okay, so this one's gonna go this way. Because that makes sense, right? When we have a negative with sine on the rose curves, it's going to change everything and where it, where it's oriented. But if it's an even number of petals on a rose curve and we're we're graphing it, it's still going to be the same for odd, for negative versus positive. Okay, so these were those tests for symmetry that I was alluding to. Okay, we're going to be able to look at them and, and decide what our test for symmetry is, right? And we're going to ask you for a max r value as well. Okay, so a max r value on something like this, what's the biggest the radius gets to be? Three. Three. How about this one? Four. And what's this one? Three. 
And then how about um, this one? Four. Four, because a plus b was four, right? Max our value here. Four. Here. Three. Okay, what's the maximum R value we can have in this one? Four. Four and three, right? And you're going to be able to look at them and know what they are, right? As long as you understand that if it's symmetric to the pole, it looks like this, right? It's a mirror image of the, this way. And if it is symmetric with the, the polar axis and versus them symmetric with the line theta equals pi over two. All right, so this part isn't, I'm not super concerned about you, but I want you to practice some of the tests. All right, so let's test r equals negative 2 sine of theta for symmetry. Okay? So you don't have this on your paper, but there may be room in the margin at the very bottom. If you can see it, and you know how, to, how it looks and how you graph it, right? If you can see it, this is more for people who don't spend the time to do the explorations and to really get a deep dive into them and know what they're doing. So this is for people who are having the cheek to chart it out with the p-chart, like we did last yesterday. And so if you don't know the symmetry, you would do that really quick first to figure out how it's symmetric and then do your cheek p-chart and then plot your points, right? But we're going to be a head, and head and shoulders above that because we've spent more time with it, right, investigating how to how the Desmos or our graphing calculators did it, plus our conic, our, our polar cards and so forth. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's try a symmetry, symmetry test. So first of all, what do we know about this guy? Uh, well, radius. radius of two, max our value is two. What kind is it? Unison? Uh, circle. 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 It's a circle. It's a circle. So it's a circle. Okay. So if we think about what we would sketch this as is a circle, which way is it? Up and down. Below the pole, and we go out too, right? Yeah. Okay. So where's the symmetry there? Pi over two, symmetric with respect to pi over two. Okay. Because even though pi over two is heading this way. Wouldn't it also, because it's reflected, be symmetric with respect to 3 pi over 2, right? So, so if it were above that, where it's supposed to be, mm -hmm. would it be symmetric to 3 pi over 2? No, it's still pi over 2. Okay. Yep. Okay. So let's make sure that we're right. So let's check our test for symmetry. We're going to see if it's symmetric with respect to the polar axis. So we're going to replace theta with negative theta. So r equals negative 2 sine of negative theta. Okay, was sine an even or an odd function? Do we have to plug in As long as you can do it without, you don't have to. Okay? So recall, was sine even or odd? It was odd. It was odd. Okay, so sine of negative theta is negative sine of theta. So if we do r equals negative 2 times negative sine of theta, am I going to get the original function back? No. So we know it's not symmetric with respect to the polar axis. But if we do the second one will work, and the, uh, the third one will work as well. Or just, yeah. Okay, not the third. Okay. All right, we're out of time.